All right, we're starting off with Islamic art and architecture. And so on this screencast, I'm going to do historical context. Um, so first, let's take a look at this map. And this is the extent of um, the spread of Islam up until 1700. So this map dates between 630 CE and 1700. So you can see in this brown area is, well, first Mecca is in Saudi Arabia and Medina. These are two very important cities for the religion of Islam. Uh, but then also you can see after that, after 632, we see it throughout the Saudi Arabia Peninsula. Um, it took over Jerusalem and then spread into North Africa. This is um, you know, into Egypt and Libya. And then you can see how it continued to spread all the way up here into what is modern day Spain. So it spread very far up at the top. It took over most of North Africa. And then over here in the further east, we could see it well into the Indian subcontinent. Um, and so that is why there's a, there was a large population of people that were Islamic in India. Uh, now most of that population's in Pakistan, but that shows the spread of where it was. Down here, we can see the spread of Islam into Southeast Asia. So down here, we can see uh, what's now Indonesia. It was called the East Indies at the time, but this is the South China Sea, and so it will be following this arrow right here down here. So we've got Borneo, Sumatra, the island of Java, but this would be the modern day uh, Indonesia, which holds probably the largest number of people who are Muslim in the world today. There's a large population of Muslims in this region here. Okay, so moving on to the next slide, uh, the historical context it began among the Arab people. It was founded by Muhammad in 610, arising on the Arabian Peninsula amongst what's called the Semitic people, Semite. Uh, that's a group of people that have ties to people who are Jewish. If you've heard the term anti-Semitic, it means against Jewish. So this is this is the similar types of people. But it was founded specifically in the city of Mecca. Now Muhammad was, um, let's see, he's the founder. And um, he began, well, he was adopted by a caravan trader when he was young. And then when his adopted father died, he married his adopted mother, Khadija, in 610. And while in the desert, Muhammad received the word of God from the angel Gabriel. Muhammad had sought solitude in a cave, and these revelations to him became the basis of Islam. So Khadija becomes Muhammad's first convert to Islam. Islam means submission to God's will, and Muslims are considered those who have submitted to God's will. Islam recognizes what they call truths from earlier religions, but believes that Islam itself is the fulfillment of the other religions. So both Jesus and the Virgin Mary is in the Quran. They recognize Jesus as a prophet, but this is seen as the next step in what is the true religion for Islamics. Uh, Mecca is the heart of uh, Islam. It was a strategic location in Saudi Arabia at the time, and um, it, was, it was difficult to attack from other different cultures, including, well, first of all, it was too far for the Byzantines to attack. It's too far, really, even from um, parts of Africa. So Mecca becomes this a booming caravan city and a cultural center on the Saudi Arabian Peninsula. And you can see right here where Mecca is in relation to the rest of um, the rest of the country. Here's modern day Riyadh, uh, and you've got Egypt over here. Uh, between 610 and 622, Islam is spread amongst caravan traders in Mecca, and that leads to the unification of various tribal peoples and clan groups 
But Muhammad wants to unify all Arabian peoples and remove tribal-based polytheism. So he creates the Ummah, and that means the community of the faithful. So that begins to develop at this time. So Ummah, in translated, means Islamic community, and people are united based on religion rather than their ethnicity or tribe. And then um, in 632 is, well, hold on, I'm jumping ahead. In 622, Muhammad and the Ummah are actually chased out of Mecca, and they flee to Medina. So that is the, t up here, north of Mecca. And that was a significant event because uh, it was called the Hira, H-I-G-R-A, and that means emigration. And so the uh, Uma begins to build in, in Medina. And then by 629, Muhammad had gained substantial numbers of converts. And in 629, uh, we see the reconquest of Mecca. And that, so they head back to Mecca in 629. In 632, Muhammad died. And that is the beginning of the caliphate, which we'll talk about in a second. So the official book of Islam is called the Quran, and it began and established the five pillars of Islam, which you probably learned in seventh grade. And it is also established um, the first caliph by Abu Bakr, and that be is the beginning of the first caliphate. The caliphate splits in the 7th century when there is an argument over the succession of the fourth caliph. Uh, getting back to the five pillars in, for, of Islam, the uh, ones that we have um, listed for the five pillars are called the Shahada, which is their profession that there is only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. Then there is Salat, which is a daily regiment of prayer towards Mecca, where they stop and pray multiple times during the day facing the city of Mecca. Then there's Psalm, it's A-W-M. It's the observation or ritual of fasting that occurs especially during the month of Ramadan. And during Ramadan, they fast all day and eat after the sun goes down. Then there's the zakat, Z-A-K-A-T, which is the giving a portion of one's wealth to charity, if it's possible. And then there's the hajj. And the hajj is really important because that is the pilgrimage to Mecca, and it's expected of people of the Islamic faith to go to Mecca at least once in their lifetime to visit the Kaaba, which is one of your pieces we're going to learn about later. Okay, uh, so the ca caliphate uh, was supposed to uh, lead the whole Islamic community, and when it ended, we, it's, we no longer have a unified Islamic community. We actually see a split. We have the Shiite Muslims and the Sunni Muslims. Shiite is, um, you know, in uh, English, is spelled S-H-I apostrophe I-T-E, and then Sunni is S-U-N-N-I. So the Shiite believed that the people who should take over from after Muhammad died should be Muhammad's family. They should be the leaders. And they claim that the first three caliphs that came in after Muhammad died should be frauds. Uh, so supporters of Ali was as the rightful successor because he was the cousin and son-in-law of the prophet Muhammad. So Ali was the fourth caliph, but was assassinated shortly after. Uh, there, they also refused to acknowledge the legitimacy of the Umayyad dynasty. Uh, they are the successors of Umar um, and recognized Ali. They believe that they are being truer to Islamic law and uh, considered themselves to follow more fundamental Islamic laws. Now, Shiite Muslims are mostly concentrated in Iran and Iraq and focus on the study of the Caliphs and Muhammad. The other group are the Sunnis, and the Sunnis believe that the Ummah, or the community, should select a leader. 
the Sunni Muslims represent a, the large majority of uh, is people who follow Islam today and acknowledge the legitimacy of the first three caliphs. They focus mainly on the Quran and its teaching and believe that it's the word of the Quran is the law. And that's the rest of the Islamic population, which really focuses on the rest of the Middle East Asia and Africa. So the majority of the Islamic population. Next I'm going to talk about uh, stylistic uh, conventions.